is Judy Simpson, and I'm here to give my testimony on how I came to uh, Jesus as Lord Gatineau Church. So I was going to another church, but I was having a hard time getting back and forth. I didn't always have a ride. So I decided I would look for a closer church that I could actually come. I kept, kept looking and looking, but there was nothing. There was just nothing. And then I thought, okay, maybe I'll just look a little further. Like maybe I'll look in Ottawa too, if I can still go there by bus. One day, uh, I was getting really frustrated because I wasn't finding anything. I came across Jesus is Lord. Uh, I thought, oh wow, I'm gonna try this one. So I called and a lady answered the phone and I told her I was looking for a church. I later learned on that that was Pastor Adele, and she gave me the address, and I said, okay, I'll see you on Sunday. So that was good, and I was going along. I was so happy because I had found a church. Wow, you know. Sunday I came. She met me outside, came in the church, and as I came in the church, it was like I looked around, and like a lot of the people were Filipinos, and I thought, wow. And she, she was a little lady. And uh, I remember looking at her because I always said I didn't want a woman past her. <laughs> and uh, she got up and I remember her first word, she got up on the altar and she said, uh, Praise the Lord! <laughs> and then she said, God is good! And I thought, this is my church. <laughs> this is where I want to be. And yes, the people were loving, they were friendly, they were welcoming and everything about the church I loved and I still do and God is so good that he gave me this home and blessed me with this home church. I really thank him. Hello, Hello happy, happy 29th anniversary, anniversary JL Ottawa. Ottawa. Uh, ako nga po lang si Jobert Velasco. At ako nga po si Cherry. Uh, yan po, uh, gusto lang po namin magpasalamat at magpuri sa Panginoon dahil sa ginawa po niya sa aming buhay. Noon po, akala ko po lahat ng pagpunta ko, pagpunta ko po sa Canada, makuha ko po ang pamilya ko dito ay dahil lang po sa sensation ko lang po sa diskarte, gano'n po ay nakilala ko po ang mga taong ginamit po ng Panginoon na sa JLS po. Yun po, doon ko po nakita na siya po pala ang kumilos sa, sa buhay ko, sa buhay na yung pamilya. Uh, share ko lang din po yung story niya sa Taiwan, yung anim na uh, pitong taon na nagtatrabaho siya sa Taiwan. Pero hirap pa rin kami sa buhay, dalo na lumalaki yung mga anak namin, dumadami yung gastusin, dumating yung trahedya sa buhay niya. Uh, nabangga po siya ng sasakyan sa Taiwan. At andun po yung takot namin na, na, hindi na baka hindi na kami, uh, hindi na kami magkita-kita. Kaya napag na namin na umuwi na lang siya ng Pilipinas. Pero meron palang mas, may, mas magandang plano si Lord sa buhay namin. Yun ay dinala niya kami dito sa Canada. Naging isang buong family kami. Sama-sama. At hindi lang yun, buong family kami, sama-sama kami na pupuri at naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Lalo na po yung mga bata, yung mga anak namin, marunong na rin silang magdasal na kahit wala kami rito sa bahay. Yes, uh, nagdadasal sila bago sila kumain. Kaya yun, uh, parang malaking achievement na yun, malaking blessing at malaking transforma transformation na yun sa buhay namin, pam pamilya. Hi there! I'm Noah from the Empire Life Group and I'm 26 years old and I've been attending Bible study for three months. I was first asked to attend by my four friends whom I met at work, Prencilin, Remily, Jerlene, and Gurley. What's kept me going back to Bible study has been the peace and comfort that I find in it. I'm able to tune out all the other distractions from my everyday life and I'm able to focus on strengthening my relationship with God. It's also taught me how to uh, how to tune out those distractions even outside of Bible study and apply it more to my everyday life. I've also noticed uh, I've noticed over the last couple months that I've had a desire to share my faith and my experiences more so than I ever have previously, and I've done so through trying to speak to my family where I used to be scared to do so. 
since attending JIL, I have felt accepted and I felt the kindness of many people and I have grown to be more confident in my faith through everyone else. And I hope to one day be able to attend with uh, my family as well as my friends. I'm thankful that I've been led here um, and that this has been my path and I'm excited what the future holds for me. Hello fellow JIL members, my name is Chris. I've been a member here for approximately two years now. And as some of you know, I'm in a wheelchair as I was in a motorcycle accident uh, about 15 years ago. Even back then, God was speaking to me about a Filipino church named Jesus is Lord. This church was in the same building where I was completing my rehabilitation. And when I went to that location in 2009, I noticed a sign inside the building that showed the addresses of the units. And there it was. Jesus is Lord, the unit 119. People who know me know that my racing number on my motorcycle was always number 119. For many years, that number was very special to me. So seeing that number next to Jesus as Lord gave me, a, gave me hope in a time where I felt hopeless. It let me know that God was with me. And there were times when I was doing my rehab workout at the neuro gym, and I could hear everybody at JIL worshiping a few doors down. I really wanted to go check it out, but to be honest, I didn't because I was nervous. It was years later I noticed you guys on Facebook as you had the location at 10th Line Road and was curious about it, but I still didn't come to visit. It was only when I saw the location here in Orleans open up that I wanted to come check it out as I was looking for a church at that time. Even then, I didn't know that this was the very same church that was down the hall from where I was doing my rehabilitation workout. So all this time, God was leading me towards this church, and I believe it is for good reason. The day I came here, the first time, to Jesus as Lord, the members and the Filipino people demonstrated love, joy, and the character of Christ that I have rarely seen in my life. It made such an impact on me that I never left. It, I even ended up getting married to a Filipina, and I am so grateful for her, this church, and everything that God is doing in my life. God bless you all, and Malagayan, and a Bersario, Jesus is Lord Church. I'm Lito Tulawan. Uh, we came from Taiwan before, and we've been part of the IL family there, and we came here in last year, 20, November 2, 2023. February 3, we've been starting a Bible study here in Canada, and we, are, we opened my house in a Bible study. My friend in Taiwan uh, messaged me, then I asked her if is it okay to make a Bible study here in my house, then she messaged uh, Sister Fe, then they reached out here in my house. Then I always, every Saturday, we open our Bible study here in every Saturday here in Petawawa. I want to thank God because my friends, uh, mas lalo nilang nakilala si God and inaccept nila as their Lord and personal Savior. And I want to thank Sister Fe and Brother Chris na always pumupunta rito sa Bible study every Saturday. I want to thank them for he to share the gospel of God. Happy 29th Anniversary, anniversary JL, JL Ottawa. Ottawa! Happy 29th Anniversary, JL Ottawa! God bless you all, and Malaga Yang, and Abersario, Jesus is Lord Church. Happy 29th Anniversary, JL Ottawa! This is Judy Simpson, and I'm here to give my testimony on how I came to uh, Jesus is Lord Gatineau Church. So I was going to another church, but I was having a hard time getting back and forth. I didn't always have a ride. So I decided I would look for a closer church that I could actually come. I kept, kept looking and looking, but there was nothing. There was just nothing. And then I thought, okay, maybe I'll just look a little further, like maybe I'll look in Ottawa too, 
if I can still go there by bus. One day, uh, I was getting really frustrated because I wasn't finding anything. I came across Jesus is Lord. Uh, I thought, oh wow, I'm going to try this one. So I called and a lady answered the phone and I told her I was looking for a church. I later learned on that that was Pastor Adele. And she gave me the address and I said, okay, I'll see you on Sunday. So that was good and I was going along. I was so happy because I had found a church. Wow, you know. Sunday I came, she met me outside, came in the church. And as I came in the church, it was like I looked around and like a lot of the people were Filipinos. And I thought, wow. And she, she was a little lady. And uh, I remember looking at her because I always said I didn't want a woman past her. <laughs> And uh, she got up, and I remember her first word, she got up on the altar, and she said, uh, Praise the Lord! <laughs> and then she said, God is good! And I thought, this is my church. <laughs> this is where I want to be. And yes, the people were loving, they were friendly, they were welcoming, and everything about the church I loved, and I still do. And God is so good that He gave me this home and blessed me with this home church. I really thank you. Hello, happy 29th anniversary, JL Ottawa. Uh, ako nga po lang si Jobert Velasco. At ako na po si Cherry. Uh, yan po, uh, gusto lang po namin magpasalamat at magpuri sa Panginoon dahil sa ginawa po niya sa aming buhay. Uh, noon po, uh, akala ko po lahat ng ang pagpunta ko, pagpunta ko po sa Canada at makuha ko po ang pamilya ko dito. Uh, dahil lang po sa Skarte, gano'n po ba? Nakilala ko po ang mga taong ginamit po ng Panginoon na sa JLS po. Yun po, doon ko po nakita na siya po pala ang kumilos sa, sa buhay ko, sa buhay ng pamilya. Uh, share ko lang din po yung story niya sa Taiwan, yung anim na apitong uh, taon na nagtatrabaho siya sa Taiwan. Pero hirap pa rin kami sa buhay talo na lumalaki yung mga anak namin, dumadami yung gastusin, dumating yung trahedya sa buhay niya. Uh, nabangga po siya ng sasakyan sa Taiwan. At andun po yung takot namin na, na, hindi na baka hindi na kami, uh, hindi na kami magkita-kita. Kaya napag na namin na umuwi na lang siya ng Pilipinas. Pero meron palang mas, may, mas magandang plano si Lord sa buhay namin. Yun ay dinala niya kami dito sa Canada. Naging isang buong family kami. Sama-sama. At hindi lang yun, buong family kami, sama-sama kami na pupuri at naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Lalo na po yung mga bata, yung mga anak namin. Marunong na rin silang magdasal na kahit wala kami rito sa bahay. Yes, uh, nagdadasal sila bago sila kumain. Kaya yun, uh, parang malaking achievement ay malaking blessing at malaking transforma transformation na yun sa buhay namin, pag pamilya. Hi there! I'm Noah from the Empire Life Group, and I'm 26 years old, and I've been attending Bible study for three months. I was first asked to attend by my four friends, whom I met at work, Prenzillen, Remily, Jerlene, and Gurley. What's kept me going back to Bible study has been the peace and comfort that I find in it. I'm able to tune out all the other distractions from my everyday life, and I'm able to focus on strengthening my relationship with God. It's also taught me how to, uh, how to tune out those distractions even outside of Bible study and apply it more to my everyday life. I've also noticed, uh, I've noticed over the last couple months that I've had a desire to share my faith and my experiences more so than I ever have previously, and I've done so through trying to speak to my family, where I used to be scared to do so. Since attending JIL, I have felt accepted, and I felt the kindness of many people, and I have grown to be more confident in my faith through everyone else. And I hope to one day be able to attend with uh, my family as well as my friends. I'm thankful that I've been led here um, 
and that this has been my path, and I'm excited what the future holds for me. Hello fellow GIL members, my name is Chris. I've been a member here for approximately two years now. And as some of you know, I'm in a wheelchair as I was in a motorcycle accident uh, about 15 years ago. Even back then, God was speaking to me about a Filipino church named Jesus is Lord. This church was in the same building where I was completing my rehabilitation. And when I went to that location in 2009, I noticed a sign inside the building that showed the addresses of the units. And there it was, Jesus is Lord, Unit 119. People who know me know that my racing number on my motorcycle was always number 119. For many years, that number was very special to me. So seeing that number next to Jesus as Lord gave me, it gave me hope in a time where I felt hopeless. It let me know that God was with me. And there were times when I was doing my rehab workout at the neuro gym and I could hear everybody at JIL worshipping a few doors down. I really wanted to go check it out, but to be honest, I didn't because I was nervous. It was years later I noticed you guys on Facebook as you had the location at 10th Line Road and was curious about it, but I still didn't come to visit. It was only when I saw the location here in Orleans open up that I wanted to come check it out, as I was looking for a church at that time. Even then, I didn't know that this was the very same church that was down the hall from where I was doing my rehabilitation workout. So all this time, God was leading me towards this church, and I believe it is for good reason. The day I came here, the first time, to Jesus as Lord, the members and the Filipino people demonstrated love, joy, and the character of Christ that I have rarely seen in my life. It made such an impact on me that I never left. It, I even ended up getting married to a Filipina, and I am so grateful for her, this church, and everything that God is doing in my life. God bless you all, and Malaga Yang, Anniversario, Jesus is Lord Church. I'm Lito Tulawan. Uh, we came from Taiwan before and we've been part of the IL family there and we came here in last year, 20, November 2, 2023. February 3, we've been starting a Bible study here in Canada and we, are, we opened my house in a Bible study. My friend in Taiwan uh, messaged me then I asked her if is it okay to make a Bible study here in my house. Then she messaged uh, Sister Fe. Then they reached out here in my house. Then I always, every Saturday, we open our Bible study here in every Saturday here in Petawawa. Um, I want to thank God because my friends. Uh, Mas lalo nilang nakilala si God and inaccept nila as their Lord and personal Savior. And I want to thank Sister Fe and Brother Chris na always pumupunta rito sa Bible study every Saturday. I want to thank them for he to share the gospel of God. Happy 29th anniversary, JL Ottawa. Happy 29th anniversary.
Hallelujah. So, Lord, our heart is full of gratitude that you are our God. Lord, this very morning, oh God, hallelujah, once again, we welcome you, O oh Holy Spirit. Move freely in the midst of us, oh God. Hallelujah. And then, our Lord, our Lord, our hearts, oh God, prepare our hearts, oh God, to be a fertile ground to receive your words, oh God. 
and allow us, Lord, to see your open heaven, O God, so that, Lord, we will focus alone unto you, O God, this very morning, O God. And, Lord, we lift up your servants, O God, to the life of our, hallelujah, director, Reverend Pastor Bong Gonzalez, O God, who will, who will share your words, O God. Lord, let the anointing, the fullest anointing of your Holy Spirit be upon him, O God. That he will speak your words with boldness, with power, with authority, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that, Lord, cover him with your precious blood, O God. That as he stand in this pulpit, O God, it is you alone who will be seen upon his life, O God. And Lord, as we listen to your words, O God, we know that your words is powerful, sharper than two double-edged swords, O God. It will penetrate to our, our soul, O God, and our spirit. It will judge to the thoughts of our hearts, O God. It will bring transformation into our lives, O God. And today, O God, we know and we do believe that you will revive us, you will restore us, you will refresh us, O God, in our love and our service unto you, O God. Hallelujah. And Lord, thank you, Lord, that you will continue to do miracles, signs, and wonders today. That those who needs, he needs healing, O oh God, you will heal, O oh God. Those who needs comfort, O oh God, you will comfort them, O oh God. Those who needs deliverance, O oh God, you will set them free, O oh God. Lord, whatever the needs of your people today, O oh God, you will meet all our needs today, O oh God. Because you are our God, you are here, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So Lord, let the covering of your precious blood be upon this place, O oh God, and we declare that the enemy has no place in this place, declaring that this is a holy ground, and hallelujah. Lord, because you are with us, O oh God, this service, O oh God, is a victorious service, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So Lord, we entrust everything unto you. We give you praise, glory, honor, and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, we welcome you, King Jesus. Be, behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the throne. Salvation God. 
for your presence in this place, oh God. Here we are again, your people that you have created, worshiping you with hearts full of gratitude, God. Overwhelming gratitude for who you are and what you've done, all that you've done in our lives, in our families, in our churches, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Here we are again. Here I stand within your presence, longing for your touch. A thousand days could not compare to one day in your court. My precious Can we sing this again, church? Here I stand Here I stand within your presence Longing for your touch A thousand days to not To one day
one more time. We say this to our God with our family, Lord. We promise I will love. Exalt him in this place as we sing. Because you are worthy of you are worthy of your Yes, you are only you for from you.
ikaw ka. Yes, malakas na malakas na malakas na palakpak sa ating Diyos na buhay. The best is yet to come. Can you tell your seatmate, the best is yet to come. The Amen. The best is yet Praise to come. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Before you sit down, can you give a high five? To your seat, May. Can you give a high five? Yes. Say, I'm glad you are here. You are in the best place at the right time. Amen. Oh, I can sense the Spirit of the Lord so overwhelming in this place. Let's also say hi to the overflow. I see a lot of people in the overflow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome and happy 29th year anniversary JIL Ottawa District Churches. What started as one church in 1995 grew into four different churches across Ottawa region and Hall region. I would like to acknowledge first and foremost the overwhelming and uncontainable presence of the most important guest in this place, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's give the Holy Spirit a big, big clap of praise. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit of our living God is overwhelming and uncontainable. We would like also to acknowledge the presence of our guest speaker, Reverend Pastor Nicanor Bong Gonzalez, who will be further introduced via an AVP and his one and only beloved wife and mother of his three children, Elijah Min, Jeremiah, and Pastor TJ Timothy John, who is the pastor of the JIL Prince Edward Island, who just celebrated the first year anniversary this month as well. May we request our dear Pastor Ross Gonzalez to stand up to be recognized. The rare and sweet Rose of Sharon. Amen. Praise the Lord. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of our Quebec provincial pastor, Reverend Pastor Donald Barrientos, with his one and only beloved wife, Sister Leda Barrientos. Can you please stand up? As well as the congregation of JL Montreal who came with them, we would like to acknowledge you. Amen. Sampo, yan po ang mga ating mga taga JL Montreal. Amen. Bonzu, como sa ba? Sa babie, merci, trebie. We would like to acknowledge also the presence of our brethren from JIL Cornerstone, Toronto. And may we request for them to stand up and be recognized. Thank you for coming, my brethren from JIL Cornerstone, Toronto. And now we would like to call the congregation and the pastors of the four different churches here in Ottawa. We would like to acknowledge our brethren from the JIL Gatineau Church, headed by our dynamic Pastora Adele, Kato Hughes, with the loving support of her beloved husband, Brother Wayne Hughes. Sige po, tayo muna mga taga Gatineau. Everyone stand. Even in the overflow. There are some Jael Gatino in the overflow. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we would like also to acknowledge our brethren from the Jael Ottawa West Church, headed by our beloved Pastora Judith Abellanosa, together with her husband, Brother Wilfredo Abellanosa. Praise the Lord. Also in the overflow, there are some in the overflow as well. Praise God. We would like also to acknowledge our brethren from the JIL Ottawa East Church, headed by our beloved Pastor Antonio Tony Laracas with his wife and the district admin, Sister Mary Laracas. And the congregation, please stand up. Ottawa East, praise the Lord, even in the overflow. Naku, yung iba yata, hindi na tumatayo. And the last but not the least, we would request our brethren from JIL Orleans Church, headed by yours truly, with the support of my loving husband, Brother Florentino Agpoon. 
Tayo po mga taga Orleans, please, stand up! Stand up! Even in the overflow, yung mga hindi po tumayo sa ang church. <laughs> And lastly, one of the main reasons for the celebration, we would like to request all our guests and first-time visitors who responded to the invitation to join us today. Your presence is truly a blessing for you make a significant impact to this glorious celebration. Can we request our first-timers? Visitors who came for the first time. Woo! Yes! Hallelujah! Kaya pala, first timers pala lahat. Praise the Lord! Woo! And before we further introduce our guest speaker, Let us first invite on the stage a couple who is representing the office of the Philippine Ambassador. Micah Magnolia Maog Fisher is currently the Deputy Head of Mission of the Philippines Embassy in Ottawa, Canada, holding the rank of a minister. Her first diplomatic posting was in Beijing, China, where she served as third, second, and eventually First Secretary and Consul from August 2006 to August 2012. Her second posting was in Phnom Penh, Cambodia from September 2014 to December 2020 where she served as First Secretary and then Minister and Consul General in charge. In Manila, she was a Special Assistant to the Foreign Affairs Under Secretary for Policy and served in various capacities in the Office of Asia and Pacific Affairs. She was a Deputy Assistant Secretary and Executive Director of ASPAC before taking her post as Deputy Head of Mission of the Philippine Embassy in Ottawa in March 2023. She holds a Bachelor's Degree in Tourism from the University of the Philippines in Diliman. She likewise obtained a Master's Degree in International Studies from the same university. She was born in Mandaluyong, Philippines, and married to Mr. Tim Fisher. Let us welcome on the stage, Madam Maika Magnolia Maog Fisher. Ambassador of uh, the Philippines to Canada. My husband and I, Tim Fisher, are pleased to be here. And please allow us to congratulate you as you celebrate your 29th anniversary here in the Ottawa District Region of Canada East. And I understand your 46th anniversary in the Philippines this October. It has been almost three years since the inauguration of the JIL Place of Worship here in Ottawa. And so allow me to congratulate the leadership and the congregation for your continued success and contributions to the Filipino community here in Ottawa and to Canada in general. I, I understand that from only six people when you started, your membership has now grown to almost 700 members. Wow and four churches in Ottawa, the JIL West, JIL East, JIL Gatineau, and JIL Orleans. This year, we are also celebrating the 75th anniversary of Philippines-Canada diplomatic relations. The strength of these relations is undergirded by the one million strong Filipino diaspora in Canada, which includes the hardworking and compassionate members of JIL. Praise the Lord. 
you, you may be wondering why I know that you are compassionate and hardworking. I only arrived here a year ago. It's because in Cambodia, JL Cambodia is, um, is an important member, partner of the Philippine Embassy in Cambodia. JIL Church in Cambodia was our partner in um, helping ensure that the elections were credible and honest and orderly. They were our partner in repatriating over 800 of our Kababayans during the pandemic. JIL was also our partner in, um, in holding a Christ-centered Christmas celebration in this Buddhist country. And even as I went here with my husband, si Pastora uh, Raul and Tina Belhika of JIL Cambodia were inter interceding for us. And I know that they are um, always with us in prayers. And so um, I know also that I can count on JIL Canada to be our partners. Right? in the program of the uh, programs of the embassy and also we, we hope to also contact uh, count on you to be praying with us right uh, in right now especially we have our kababayans and also some of course the the locals there in um, in Labrador who are affected by the wildfires please join us in praying for them and we also have our kababayans also in the Philippines who are um, you know, who are uh, being persecuted by, oppressed, you know, by foreign forces. So we hope to count on the, the, the support of JIL in praying, in advocating, in advancing the interests of the Philippines. <laughs> Salamat po and happy anniversary sa inyong lahat. Praise the Lord. Thank you po. Now... Let's listen to the Word of God as we welcome our Director of International Operation. Let's watch the screen AVP for to further introduce him. This is Judy Simpson and I'm here to give my testimony on how I came to uh, Jesus' Lord Get No Church. So I was going to another church. Pastor Bong is appointed as the Operations Director for JIL East Canada Operations. He is the senior pastor of JIL Church, Cornerstone, Toronto, with a membership of over 1,600 people and over 130 life group leaders. He is also a missionary pastor, being a blessing to churches across Canada, the United States, the Philippines, and beyond. He's also led church plants across northern Luzon, Canada, USA, and Aruba, with other Caribbean countries soon to be reached. He is married to Pastor Rose Gonzalez and has been blessed with three sons, TJ, Jerry, and Eli. He's a graduate of a Bachelor of Science in Criminology with the goal of becoming a police officer until he entered into the full-time ministry. He's known as a mentor and a teacher, fruitfully raising up many pastors and leaders, especially here in JIL East Canada. He's known as a media missionary with his online daily devotion program, fruitfully reaching hundreds across the globe. Finally, he's simply known as a servant leader who started in the ministry organizing chairs, cleaning, and setting up the sound system. Ladies and gentlemen, may we please welcome Reverend Pastor Bong Gonzalez. Hallelujah! Somebody shout praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Glory to be to God, please.
Paris uh, visited a situa tulmo silbuple. <clears throat> First, thank you very much for allowing us to be part of Jael Ottawa anniversary for and in behalf of our spiritual director, Bishop Brother Eddie Sibillanueva, his family, with Reverend uh, Joby Villanueva Binalia, Senator Joel Villanueva, Mayor John John Villanueva, and the Executive Management Board, we would like to extend Happy 29th Anniversary, JIL Ottawa. <laughs> Maybe some of you did not know, but we live here in Ottawa sometime in 2003 after we left Montreal. Uh, we've been we've been moved here, asked to move here, and we are actually uh, in tune to live here in Ottawa until Jesus return. But we have learned to serve the Lord not for our own choices, but just to obey and choose wherever the Lord sent us. So in sometime in 2004, we've been asked to move again to Toronto, and until today we are in Toronto. But one of our always uh, longing and to see is to be here in Ottawa, our second home away from Toronto. Uh, we feel at home in Toronto because here we can be as who we are, not because of our position in the church, but as a fellow human being who can laugh, who can cry, who can shout, who can eat a lot <laughs> without uh, worrying that someone will be stumbled. Uh, we find our family here in in Ottawa, away from our own biological family. So, in behalf of our children, thank you very much always for having such kind of, uh, uh, what's the right word? Such kind of acceptance. That, that's probably the uh, understatement, the saying, you just accepted us. But I believe you have loved us, uh, maybe, maybe really uh, beyond our ability to to enjoy so far but uh, we cannot ask for more and of course the praise and worship today wow everybody say wow, wow. the sound system wow. wow everything is perfect maybe for me i'm i'm so blessed today i can sense the presence of the lord the presentation was so uh, amazing and I think the Holy Spirit is ready to release His power and love to each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Are you ready to hear the Word of God? Amen. Let us all arise please once again and let's read the text that has been uh, offered or presented to yours truly as the text of our celebration today, including the title of our 29th anniversary celebration. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30 in New King James Version. It was recorded this way. The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he who wins soul is wise. Amen? Le fruit de Dios est un arbre de vie, et c'est lui que gag le am et sag. Andre, ça va? Très bien. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for the privilege of sharing your word. To our wonderful people, brothers and sisters in Christ, your people that you have brought from darkness into light. Men and women who are now in the most exciting journey of life. That though we were undeserving of your love and yet you poured out your love. And also given us an opportunity to share it to another people. Today, Lord, we pray. May you sit beside us. Speak with us, O Lord. Speak to us and Lord touch someone today encourage someone enlighten someone transform someone heal someone today save someone and bless everyone Holy Spirit this is your church we are your people so do as you wish O Lord and as you plan only to exalt Jesus and to honor him as our Lord and Savior every word that will be said let it not be with enticing words of man's wisdom but let it be with a demonstration of your power and of your spirit. We commit to you all things in Jesus' name. This we pray and everybody say, Amen and Amen. Come on, one more best clap of praise to Him. And because you are so excited to hear, please be seated right now. Amen. I have, I think, 29 slides. 
Actually, this has been shared in other church anniversary celebration in the Atlantic. It just happened you have the same team. So I believe the message will be shared to you as if it is the first time to be shared. The theme of the, our 29th anniversary is intentional soul winning. Everybody say intentional soul winning. Say to your seatmate, soul winning is intentional. I have three propositions why I would like to share to you these words. First, that we encourage people to share the gospel in every opportunity. Why it's important for people to hear the gospel? Because as you will be hearing every day in the news, most of them are frightening. Some of them are kind of uh, fearsome news. The good news has been set aside. Majority of the newscasters are looking for accident, looking for murder, looking for things that when people heard it, some of us might be affected on how we can look at our community and even our surrounding. But Jesus Christ came by the power of His, His Holy Spirit to bring us good news. Greater than, no, greater than any good news that we can receive. It's greater than you have a job, greater than a new baby is coming, greater than a friend is going to be married, greater than the news that the Canadian immigration sent you a letter and says, congratulations, you are now permanent residents of Canada. Those are all good and those are all, I could say, uh, reasonable for us to rejoice. But you know what is the greatest good news? That the Word of God has declared, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. Amen? Kardu atantimal limon. Apin ke, no, mali. Kila done son fish unik. Apin ke, kokon ke, le ne perish pa, me, akele, bie eternal. Amen? Come on, give God the best clap of praise. It is regardless of who we are, regardless of our religion, regardless of our denomination. The good news must be heard by everyone. And sad to say, they are not hearing it until today. You come into this place not to change religion, but to hear the good news. Number two, to remind us that God is expecting us to share God's word, focusing on Jesus. So it's all about Jesus. Sad to say, Many of the organization, including us, might have the temptation. Oh. It was so excellent. But we can never compete with angels. When we worship, we are the one that benefits from it because the presence of God comes. And the Bible said, where the presence of the Lord is, there is peace. That's why some of you are on your tears when we started to praise and worship the Lord. Because His presence touches our spirit that is a longing to have that rest, repose in the presence of the Lord. And we always enjoy His presence because His presence brings us liberty bring us peace, and somehow give us kind of hope that we are loved by the Lord. Amen? Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, I'm blessed to be in the presence of the Lord. Yes, though, though these are good, but you know, the greatest way to really please the Lord is regarding intentionally winning someone in the Lord or for the Lord. Let me share to you, if not four things, three things today intentional soul winning is it is because it is the reason we are called by the lord it is the reason why we are still here in john chapter 15 verse 16 says you did not choose me but i choose you that you should go bear fruit and your fruit should remain we are still here because there are still many people that are not going to heaven Ladies and gentlemen, I know you know it already, but sometimes we disregard it. Not everyone who die go to heaven. Not everyone who lives today will go to heaven. Bible has implied, emphatically said, 
There is only one way towards heaven, and that is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. In Acts chapter 4, it says, There is only one given under heaven wherein man can be saved, and that is in the name of Jesus. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 3, it says, The first thing I am sharing to you is what also I received, that the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, died, and rose again from the dead for our sin. My brothers and sisters, it is important for us to know that every day that we live, after we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, is to share the gospel. Why? Because it is the only hope for us, a single human being, and for every human being from every generation to be given an opportunity to be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the current damnation and condemnation of life. And for the most fearful condemnation in eternity. Why we should believe in eternal damnation? Because today we can see around us men and women who could never find peace. Some are trying to buy one. Some are trying to find peace by getting married. But according to study and survey, be ready, 70% of the married people are have no peace. Look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, I know someone. That's why divorce is so high and even demanded in the Philippines. It is now in the table of the congressmen. And we as Christian nation and Christian believers, we speak that we say it is not the solution. Divorce is not the solution to find peace in troubled marriage life. What we need is Jesus Christ because only Jesus can change the life of someone. I remember your own pa pastor here, if I may share them their testimony. Sometime in August of 2003, after my preaching here, Sister Tara at the time, a worship leader, same as anointed to the daughter that led us today, approached me and said, Pastor, can I talk to you? I said to her, of course. So we stand on the side and, said to him, and she said, Pastor, I'm tired of my marriage life. I'm planning for a divorce. You remember that? And I said to her, well, that is your right. Under the law of Canada, you can do that. But will you give Jesus a chance to heal and bring a miracle in your marriage life? Let's say up to December 31. This is what we will do. We will pray for you. You pray for your husband <coughs> with your children. Uh, with your children, Terry and Dylan and Jessica, every time you have the opportunity, you will pray. And then, when Tino is asleep, you embrace him and utter a prayer. When he leaves, the bed that he's using, you lay your hands and ask the Lord to give him an opportunity to know you and to be transformed and to be changed. And here comes Brother Tino, the guy who also come to church once in a while, look at your seatmate. Say to your seatmate, I know someone <laughs> coming to church once in a while. And he, when he was asked by one friend, Oh bro, why you're coming? Well, I have seen so much, I need to redo something. So, in Tagalog, bawas kasalanan muna. And he used to sit at the back, but one time she started to sit in front. And to make the long story short, Tara called us one night. And, and uh, because we promised them, call us anytime. One night, they call us. We're still living in McDonald. McDonald. Mac, ah, Donald only. Donald McDonald. <laughs> Donald Street, uh, an apartment. So around 12 midnight, we ran to their house. My wife talked to, Ro to, to Tara. I talked to Tino. I simply asked, Brother Tino, he's sitting there, do you love your wife? And he said, yes. Do you love your children? And yes. Do you want to fix this? And he said, yes. So, there's only one way. You need to forgive one another. So, we come together. They pray together. And we have some discussion in there. And that is, Brother Tino is requesting Tara to allow him to go out and do his way. Uh, and his life is nightlife. Brother Andre, nightlife. And Tara said, I accept uh, and I will allow you on one condition. Pastor Bong will be with you. 
And without me knowing, I don't know why, I said yes. And he picked me up. We went to the beer house, to the bar. In that bar, we have all his friends, some of them high in drugs, some of them drinking alcohol. We sat together on one table, and I said to them, I cannot drink uh, wine or alcohol. Not because I don't like. I like, but I could not. And they said, okay, pastor, how about orange juice? No, 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 not orange juice. They might think you're tabling me, you know? So let me just have something, water. And they offered me Perrier. The first time I drink Perrier. That was middle of the night up to 3 a.m. And then he brought me home. The following day, following night, here he comes again. And we play billiard, we play dart, we meet all his friends. And probably after a week, I told him, you know, Brother Tino, if someone from the JIL Ottawa will discover I'm here, probably next Sunday they won't attend. But I told him, I, did, I do this because I have promised you and your wife that we will help you to fix your marriage life. And when he dropped me in Mac McDonald, na naman, in Donald apartment, he stopped by and he... That night, I saw a man so strong in his outward appearance and yet so was like a child crying and asking Jesus to come. He prayed in his own language. I said to him, you know how to pray? You talk to him. And he prayed. He prayed that is, you know it's so sincere. And after that, I said to him, here is my Bible, my most expensive Bible. I'm, because I asked him, you have Bible? No, Pastor, I have all kinds of guns. No, no, Bible. A Bible is what I'm asking. <laughs> I have no Bible. So I told him, this is my Bible. You read it. Promise me you read it. Every day we'll talk and you just start to, you know, then... He called me uh, and said, Pastor, I like your Bible. I said, why? Because there's so much underline. I don't need to ask for revelation. The revelation is on the thing, you know, when there's under, uh, underline. So I asked, Lord, thank you very much for the message. Anyway, so there was a long journey together with them. Well, a very long journey. And one time, probably after a few months, Terry, who led us in a worship uh, leading, came to me while I was sitting, uh, I think he's still in Alexander Community Center, uh, Terry approached me and on her tears, he said, Pastor, thank you very much. I said, for what? He said, oh, Pastor, you don't know what's happening in my family, huh? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, I don't know. We're just praying, you know. After our Bible study, my mommy asked me to go inside uh, our room to bring in the, the jacket because it was winter. And when I entered the room, my dad was there kneeling. He was praying. And I silently about to get out. And my dad said to me, Terry, can you sing a song? And, and Tino said, according to Terry, that song that says, Lord, change my heart. And according to Terry, she sang, change my heart, oh God. That is the song. Yes, please. And while Terry was pray, singing, crying, his dad was weeping, asking God to change his heart. <laughs> My friends, if we are not changing someone's life, our day in this earth is useless. If we are spending so much time in debating, in arguing, Rather than reaching out to change someone's life, to bring them to Jesus, then all our knowledge, all this beautiful building that we are enjoying are useless. What is the use of this if, we, if heaven is much better? The use of this is that someone, like the family that we are now appreciating, will hear the gospel and one day say to Jesus, Jesus Change my heart, oh God. So today, it is my prayer that we become so patient with other people. Let them hear the word of God. Let us spend time with them. Sacrifice our own comfort. Reach our own uh, credential or, or so-called integrity. For we know without reaching out to them, 
without intentionally winning soul. And in winning soul, we are investing not only prayer, we are investing our time, investing almost everything in us just to win one soul and every opportunity that we have. Brother Tino, can you please stand? That's Brother Tino. Can you imagine he is our full-time job in our church as a manager of our properties? Also, my fishing body and also now my hunting body. A new man. One time we went to mission in USA because we've been asked to reach out there. I met one pastor in that place. I don't know if Brother Tino remember this. There was one pastor who asked me, where did you graduate? Your theological course. I said to him, I did not have a formal a Bible school. I am homegrown. What's the meaning of homegrown? I was converted in the Jesus Lord Church, trained by them. I attended our pastoral course, attended all the trainings that they have. We call it Brother Eddie School of Ministry. And he said, therefore, you don't have formal school in the, in the, in the Bible. And you are preaching. I said, yes, pastor, I wish I could have, but I was deprived. I graduated in BS Criminology because I want to be a policeman to kill my own father. And he said to me, well, if you come to my house, I have my Bible school certificate, diploma, and now I am taking up master's degree. And I was offended somehow. I don't know if I did it right. I said to him, actually... I bring with me a diploma, but it's not posted on the wall. I said to him, I said, can you wait? I said, yeah. I said to him, Brother Tino, can you come? And I said, this is my living diploma. My living diploma. And Brother Tino said, yes, Pastor, I am Tino Agpoon. That in Tagalog, he said, walang dating, wal, walang mat matinong Walang matinong ginagawa dati. Pero dahil sa kausap mo, binago ng Diyos ang aking buhay. You know, the pastor, I was so kind of uh, guilty because he kneeled before me and said to me, I am so proud, bragging about my education. But the truth, pastor, there was no single soul that has been changed because of my preaching and teaching. And he said to me, forgive me, Pastor. I said, no, 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 forgive me. I should have not patulized you. Hindi kita dapat pinatulan. Pinagyayabang mong natutunan mo. Wala namang nababago ang buhay sa iyo. That was in my mind. And after that, Brother Tino said, when we are, buti na lang, ginanong mo yan, sir. Oh, buti na lang, good that you did that. So that he will realize it's not about education. Of course, education helps. But education without changing life are futile and useless. So my brothers and sisters, reach out, not because you know so much, but because you care so much. Every single soul that has not found the Lord, no matter what their status in this life, they could be educated in the highest well-known universities like in Harvard University. They could be driving the most expensive new model car that can even drive without them on the driver's seat. They might be living in the most beautiful house with all air condition and well provided of all the latest technology in their house. They might be eating in the most expensive restaurant, wearing the most expensive latest kind of clothing that a man or a woman can, could wear. They might be traveling all the world. They might have be able to answer most of the questions. But without Jesus, their soul is going to perish. They will perish forever. That's why, my brothers and sisters, if we really know Jesus, care for someone, reach out for someone, invest your time telling people, Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the healer, the deliverer. Amen? Let me close in this, our own personal lives. We've been converted in Christianity, biblical Christianity, not because we want to, but because there were people who worked out together to make this young man at the time, I was 20 years old. Since my childhood, I was intending to graduate in BS Criminology, which I did, as I mentioned, for the purpose of killing my own father. 
But sometime in May 26, 1985, in our place in Caloocan City, while we were, during the time that I was youth president in our barangay, we ran out of projects and there was young man who suggested to have a Bible study. Say to your seatmate, Bible study is good. He said, let's have a Bible study. And we discussed, we were 200 young men and women, including my ex-girlfriend, now my only wife. And, and I would like to announce to everyone, I love my wife today more than I love her yesterday. We ran out of the project and they said about Bible study and we discussed which group they said if it's the traditional religion that we have, we know our lives, we know the people that are attending there. Okay, not that one. And there's another big organization, religious group in the Philippines that is mastering in philosophizing, arguing, and always commenting on the teaching of other people. And one of the guys said, if that will be the group, what will happen to us? We will become philosophers, argumentors. And one said, we have a neighbor that was a former member of Sigi Sigi Sputnik, a gang in the Philippines. He kidnapped his wife. But now he's handling a Bible and seemingly a changed man. Let's ask him. So we went to their place. His name was Eddie Jerusalem, now in eternity in the Jerusalem of heaven. He said, we asked him, yes, he said, that's true. I was once lost, but now I am found. And yes, I'm reading the Bible. And we said to him, can you teach us? And he said, not me, because I'm still learning. And then, to make the long story short, he invited a young man named Bong Vitaliano. And that young man shared to us a simple word, and yet he shared it with all sincerity. There was no payment for what he did, but that was the day that my life was changed because he gave an opportunity for us to hear the gospel. He is now in Canada attending one of our church. When he called me one time, he said to me, Pastor Bong, wawa, pastor ka na. And I said to him, because of God's grace and because you spent time in sharing the word of God. Can you imagine? Because he came into our place, overcome all the fears that he could see when with this around 80 young men at that time because not everyone decided to attend. That most of us were officers in the organization. He shared to us, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him will not perish, but have an everlasting life. That night, I responded. I responded and accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. With all my heart, I opened to Him, to Jesus. And from that time on until today, I'm already almost 60 years old. Yeah, I, I know, I just look like 59, as some of you are thinking. But you know, never in my life I abandoned this faith because only in this faith I find the purpose, the peace, and the joy. Yes, I'm still learning. There are still many things that I should learn from the Scripture. But we never stop praying and seeking someone to be saved. And today, this is the reason of the celebration. So let, be, let someone be saved today. Would you please bow your heads right now, please? This gathering today will never be a true celebration. First, if you and I who already know the Lord will never have a burden to the lost. When you go home today, your family that has not yet known Jesus as Lord and Savior. Excuse me, can you look at me for one more time? If your loved ones who do not know Jesus yet will not know that Jesus is your Lord, then you have an obligation to them. I am recommending what Tara did to Brother Tino. You pray for them. Bring your family, your children. Pray for the loved ones of yours that does not yet believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, you show your kindness and goodness to them. When they arrive home, instead of questioning, where have you been? You tell them, are you hungry? 
I prepared something for you. If they come home drunk, don't blame them. But rather, express your love to them. While touching them, cleaning them, you pray, Lord, have mercy. Open up his or her heart. If your son, kind of, we call them rebellious if they're not obeying us, but sometimes they are just changing on where their interest, that there are conflict, conflict in the house, rather than controlling them, arguing with them, why don't you bring them to Jesus through prayer? And ask Jesus, touch his or her heart, Lord. Allow him or her to know you. Because only Jesus can change them. Being good people does not mean we will be saved. Being obedient people does not mean we are really good. There is only one that will be saved. And that is those who believe on Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Expect your patience. Always show kindness. Rather than playing the songs that are not uplifting, play in your house if you do, if you can, play gospel music. Let them hear the songs that says, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Rather than playing that song, Killing me softly with this song. Killing me softly. Or rather than playing that song, Please release me, let go. For I don't love you anymore. Try to play that song. That song that says, He is Lord, He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Try to play this song. And of course, when there are misunderstanding, rather than depending yourself, why don't you try to ex just express kindness and just say, I'm sorry, even if you are not the one at fault. And then you begin to pray. Rather than looking for their mistake and shortcomings, why not show and look for an opportunity for them to know Jesus? When you start, you approach them. And you ask, are you okay? And commonly, they will say, I'm okay. Then you ask again a question. In the ratio of 1 to 10, how much are you okay? And then, if they see that you care, they might, might say, I am not actually okay. So do you know that someone cares for you and can make you really okay? And his name is Jesus. Then you just pray. And along the way, you can do whatever the Lord could do to you. Look for an opportunity. Amen? That is for our loved ones. I remember when my, uh, my, my auntie, when he was still alive, I saw that she could hardly walk. I told her, auntie, are you okay? She said to me, yeah, but not yes. You see, my knee is in pain. I told her, you know, auntie, we are getting old, but you know, that knee is not forever your knee. God promised a new body. And if only, if we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Would you like me to pray for you? She said, yes, please. And she accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. She was a very religious person. Before she dies, she made a request. She said, Bong, on my last day here on earth, I would like you to usher me to my grave. Because you have ushered me to my eternal life. And I did. I did. There was one young man who I sat beside the airplane. And I just prayed, Lord, give me an opportunity to share your word. She was, happened to be a Chinese man named Henry, Henry Chu. I introduced myself as Bong. He said, Bong? Like James Bong? No. Bong, like bong. <laughs> bang, bang, bong, bong. Oh, okay. And I said to him, Would you like to pray for me? Because I want this airplane to land safely. He said, Can it, will it work? Yes, we try. Let's try, let's try prayer. Ah, okay. And he said, Do you know the Bible? He said, Bible? No, Bible. Bible, ah, Bible is okay. And I said, Do you know that it's made in China? 
one. And yeah, I heard we're making computerized bibol. Have you seen one? No. Okay. When this airplane land, at the time it landed, my Bible is there. I'll give it to you so that you can have one. Now, it's about to fly. Can you pray? And yes, let's pray. And he said, and then we pray. And in order, while talking, you know, I want to make sure our prayer will be answered. Can you follow me in a prayer of repentance? What's repentance? Oh, it's confession of sin. You sin, right? I sin. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's pray. He's not well in English, but we prayed together. Make the long story short, the plane landed and he whispered to me, your prayer has been answered. And I said to him, God will do more than this pl pl landing this plane. God will begin to bless your family and your children. He was actually an engineer. And he said, after that, he said, can you please pray for my family? And I said, of course, we prayed together. So we prayed and I gave my Bible and I told him that I gave me my phone number and the phone number of the church here in, there in Toronto. And after a week, somebody called looking for Bang. And then the, the person who answered, Bang! And, she, and, and I called and I get the phone and said, Hi, Bong. This is Henry. I would like to attend your church. I said to him, no. No, because in our church, we speak our language. Yes. Oh, by the way, I read your Bible. It's nice, huh? It talks about me. I want to tell this to my family back in China. But I'm afraid. Because if my government know we are holding the Bible, they won't like us. So, please pray for me that my family can migrate here in Canada so that they can also know Jesus. After a month, he called again. And now he knows I'm a pastor. He said, Pastor Bong. I'm calling you because this will be the last, maybe the last time I'll call you because I'm moving in other parts of Canada. I've been attending a church and I would like you to know once my family come, the first thing I will do to them is that they will know Jesus grant me peace, joy, and answer my prayer. There are many and other people that we have shared the word of God. I know some of you has your own story, but let us not stop. Let's continue to share the word of God. First, I would like to address those who have already known Jesus, that you want the Lord to use you. Please, can you bow your heads and just ask the Lord to use you? Lord, I pray for all those who already know you as Lord and Savior. Revive their passion to share. Allow them, Lord God, to go to be training, Christian training camps that teaches evangelism, soul winning. Allow them, Lord God, to know how. But most importantly, give them the burden, give them the passion to share Jesus. Because this is the reason why we live. This is the reason why we are still here. Lord, I pray that you grant them wisdom, especially to win their own family to the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that next anniversary or maybe even earlier, Lord, they will see their loved ones truly accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And maybe if they can, Lord, allow them to open their house for a Bible study. If they cannot share the Word of God, let them bring someone. Like, like what brother Eddie Jerusalem did. He brought a young man to share to us the Word of God. And every week, we hear the Word until we understand the love of God, the salvation of God, and begin to hear your calling. Lord, I pray today, let them receive that declaration of this 29th anniversary, intentional soul winning. I pray that you receive the anointing. Would you please lift up your hands? I pray the anointing in your hands that whomever you shall lay your hands, 
to the loved ones or friend or someone you want to pray, let them be healed. Let them experience the joy and the peace and the miracles of God's answered prayer. Can you please put your hands on your heart? And I pray in that heart that God will release a kind of love and compassion to the lost, especially to your loved ones. Lord, I pray, touch that heart so that they will begin to pray. They will begin to share. They will begin to care. And Lord, answer their prayer. Because they will do it not to add members to the church, not to enlarge their life group, but to respond to the call. Go and preach the gospel. Go and bear fruit. And your fruit should last. Holy Spirit, fill them with your power and with your anointing, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this we pray. Amen. Palakpan lang po natin si Lord. Now, finally, on my last part, is there anyone in this place who would say, Pastor, I do not have, I'm not sure if Jesus is really my Lord. I'm attending a church. I hear about Jesus. But I do not remember. There was a moment in my life, like you mentioned, you received Jesus on May 26, 1985 when you were 20 years old. I also would like that kind of event in my life that I know, that I know I surrendered my life to Jesus and I know that He began to change my life because that is the day I confess my sin and invite Him into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. If there is anyone in this place who want to experience your own personal encounter with your own personal salvation that you know without any, any iota of doubt when someone told you, are you saved? Are you saved? You will say, yes, I know the place. I know the date. I even know the prayer and the feeling of being saved. I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to experience that. Let you begin to have a kind of life, a journey that is with Jesus every day. It is not a kind of life that has no problem, but it is a kind of life that in the midst of your problem, He will be there to strengthen, to help you, and to guide you. It is a kind of life that does not exclude you from getting sickness. Yes, and yet, when you are sick, you can find faith to believe Jesus can heal you. It's a kind of life that does not promise that you will not have any need. But there, it will be Jesus that has promised He will supply all the things that you need. It is a kind of life that does not promise that everything will go well. No. Sometimes there will be even worse that will come. But God promised. He promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He even promised when you pass through the water, you will never be drowned. When you pass through the fire, you will never be burned. And He also promised that cast all your cares upon Him for He cares for you. And finally, He promised that He who believe on Him will have an everlasting life. Would you please bow your heads, close your eyes, and while the worship team is singing a song, i just like to identify you. Would you please stand if you want Jesus to come into your life and let Him begin to bless your life today. Anyone? Thank you, brother. Anyone? You might be attending this church like Brother Tino before, but there was no sincere and genuine conviction, no genuine acceptance of Jesus. Maybe this is the day that you need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And now for those who stood, would you please come to the altar because we want you to feel the love of God in this place. Come now. Take that step of faith. Take that step of faith. We say and dream.
that I yet to come true. All of my hopes, all of my plans, my heart and my hands are lifted to you. For you in this place. Use it for your glory, Lord. I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. As a pleasing Lord, sacrifice, Lord, I offer you. At me for a while before we pray. You know, when I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior that day, I never expect so much. But one thing I know: the anger, the hatred, the fear just left my soul, left my heart. That's why when I arrived home that night, I actually have a marijuana prepared for my graduation celebration. I took it and said to Jesus, Jesus, I don't need this to be in the celebration because now I have you. And my family started to see the transformation. My brothers and sisters, when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's not just about going to heaven. Probably that is the ultimate. But the greatest while alive here on earth you will enjoy unspeakable peace, unending joy, a kind of life that when you open your eyes every day, you look at your surrounding with hope, knowing that it is the day that the Lord has made, and He will give you reason to rejoice. You will look at your family as a kind of people, a blessing, your job as an opportunity for God to bless, and your life does not exist to work, but you exist to please Him in your life. He can bring miracles to your own family and in your personal life. You will be delivered from worrying because from the day you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, He will take care of your health, take care of your future, take care of all in your life. Are you ready to accept Jesus? Bow your head, please. Lift up your hands. Sing this chorus to us. Lord, I offer to you. Sing it. Lord, I offer my life to you. Everything I've been through. Use it for your glory. that you're doing singing it with all your heart like a prayer use it for your glory Lord I offer my days to you lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice Listen, listen, somebody of you might be thinking, Pastor, will Jesus accept me? My sin is as big as the Titanic ship. Will He accept me? Well, my friends, listen, you might be correct. Your sin might be as big as the Titanic Sea or bigger Titanic ship or bigger than that ship. Maybe your sin 
is bigger than the biggest carrier of U.S., you might be right. But I would like you to know the love of God and His capacity to forgive is far bigger, wider than the combination of the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean. So my friend, He can accept you and forgive you. Lord, I offer you my Sing it again. Lord, I offer me the Lord, I offer my life to you. Give your soul, your body, your spirit to Him. Use it for your glory. Lord, I offer A pleasing sacrifice As a pleasing sacrifice Lord, I offer you my life Lord, I offer you my life Now just, let's just seal it with a personal prayer Say this prayer with me Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father With all my heart, with all my I heart. accept I am a sinner, I am a sinner and, I need a savior. and I need a Savior. I come to you today I come with, to all, today sincerity of with my heart, all sincerity of my heart, confessing, confessing I, am a sinner. I am a sinner. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, wash Lord. me wash from, me all my sin. from all my sins. And beginning today, and beginning today Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I offer to you my life. I offer to you my life. Lead me, change me, guide me, bless me. Beginning today, you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, this I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God the best love of praise. Congregation, celebrate with our brothers and sisters. Come on, the best love of praise. Heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is rejoicing today. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I offer my life to you, everything I've been through, use it for your glory, Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you, as a pleasing sound. And Lord, I pray, let everyone in this place, Lord, receive the call for JL Church worldwide, particularly in Ottawa. We will win soul, O oh Lord God. And I pray, Lord, as they believe, may you touch them, bless them, heal them in the name of Jesus. If anyone is sick, can you lay your hands upon your body and by faith, according to the word of God, receive your miracle of healing in Jesus' name. Begin to say, thank you, Lord. By faith, I am healed. By faith, I am healed. For those who have any family concern, can you join us with your family? And I pray God visit their family, their sons, their daughters, whatever situation they have. Lord, by their financial concern, material concern, Lord, visa concern, Lord, show to them, you are the favoring and answering God. You said in your word, you are the sun and the shield. And there is no good thing that you will deprive your people. So Lord, I pray, release your special favor and blessing upon their lives. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, anyone in this place who have any concern in their status here in Canada, Lord God, touch the Canadian immigration, O Lord God. And Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, let them have a special favor for those who believe in you. Lord God Almighty, release to them, Lord God, favor as they desire to stay longer to work here, to live here in Canada. As you have favored us, favor our brothers and sisters, O Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who are looking for jobs. O oh Lord God Almighty, may you open the doors of opportunity that they will earn. 
according to their need and according to their capacity and capability. Lord, favor them for their employment. And finally, we pray for those who are international students, Lord, who have took that gods and that trees to come to Canada. So expensive and yet, they believe, Lord, this country will be a channel of blessing to them. Lord, we pray a special favor for their work, a special favor in their employment, a special favor for their provision. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we also pray and I pray for those who have been separated from their family because of their documents, because of applying here in Canada. Lord, especially those for so long been away for their family. First, we pray, teach them and remind them to be faithful to their covenant in their marriages, O Lord. Help them to overcome all forms of temptation and sin. And we pray, allow them to experience the miracle, O Lord, that their documents, application for their PR, will arrive earlier than they're expected, O God. And let them be united to their family, Lord, here in Canada. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. And if anyone is about to give up on their marriage relationship, Lord, like what I have shared, Lord, I pray, grant them an opportunity for you to make your miracle in their life. Grant them faith to believe you can still fix their marriage life. You can still change their marriage condition because you are the miracle working God. So let them receive your miracle. Oh God, and unto you, all that glory, all the honor, somebody shout hallelujah. Till the whole world knows We won't stop Till the whole world knows We won't stop Till the whole world knows That you're a great God Great God whoa, whoa. We won't stop Till the whole world knows Just the people We won't sing. stop Till the whole world knows We won't stop Till the whole world knows That you're a great God Great God whoa, whoa. We won't stop Till the whole world knows We won't this stop Till the whole world knows We won't stop Till the whole world knows That you're a great God Great God We won't stop oh, We won't stop Till the whole world knows We won't stop Till the whole world knows We won't stop Till the whole world knows That you're a great God Great God Whoa, whoa
Praise the Lord. So you may be seated now. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. There are three ways to give for our tithes and offering. First one is through cash using your blue envelope. If this is your first time giving, you can ask for a white envelope. And lastly, if you don't have any cash or check with you, you can now give through Interact. Just type in ecr-giving at jlcanada.com. In the message section, make sure to write your local church breakdown of giving, which could be tights, offering, mission offering, dash the amount. And lastly, if you're giving for multiple people, please indicate the names with their respective breakdown of giving. There are three ways to give for our tithes and offering. First one is through cash using your blue envelope. If this is your first time giving, you can ask for a white envelope from the finance team or the gatekeepers. Second is through check. Ensure that you write the payee's name as Jesus is Lord Canada East or JL Canada East. And lastly, if you don't have any cash or check with you, you can now give through Interact. Just type in ECR-giving at jlcanada.com. In the message section, make sure to write your local church breakdown of giving, which could be tights, offering, mission offering, dash the amount. And lastly, if you're giving for multiple people, please indicate the names with their respective breakdown of giving. There are three ways to give for our tithes and offering. First one is through cash using an offering dash the amount. And lastly, if you're giving for multiple people, please indicate the names with their respective breakdown. You can ask for a white envelope from the finance team or the gatekeepers. Second is through check. In the message section, make sure to write your local church breakdown of giving, which could be tithes, offering, mission offering, dash the amount. And lastly, if you're giving for multiple people, please indicate the names with their respective breakdown of giving. There are three ways to give for our tithes and offering. First one is through cash using your blue envelope. If this is your first time giving, you can ask for a white envelope from the finance team or the gatekeepers. Second is through check. Ensure that you write the payee's name as Jesus is Lord Canada East or JL Canada East. And lastly, if you don't have any cash or check with you, you can now give through Interact. Just type in ecr-giving at jlcanada.com. In the message section, make sure to write your local church breakdown of giving, which could be tights, offering, mission offering, dash the amount. And lastly, if you're giving for multiple people, please indicate the names with their respective breakdown of giving. If you don't have any cash or check with you, you can now give through Interact. Just type in ecr-giving at jlcanada.com. In the message section, make sure to write your local church breakdown of giving, which could be tights, offering, mission offering, dash the amount. And lastly, if you're giving for multiple people, please indicate the names with their respective breakdown of giving. There are three ways to give for our tithes and offering. First one is through cash using your blue envelope. If this is your first time giving, you can ask for a white envelope from the finance team or the gatekeepers. Coming from the next generation of the uh, children. Yeah. That the gospel will continue to be spread for generations to come as long as we do 
our part, amen. And so to welcome our special members, we will be seeing one for the children's ministry and our Sula and Yanagawa. So join me in welcoming our legendary sponsor this day for your special members of the title every day. And so we were to for interpretation here by one of our governments. I said. Thank you. Thank you, Mashila. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever captures souls is wise. In gardens of grace, the righteous thrive. Their deeds are like trees of life, they revive. Their fruit, a gift of love and light, guiding souls from the darkest. In every act, in every word, their lives like trees of life in God's light reside. Their fruit is a beacon of love and grace, guides lost souls to a heavenly place. 
capturing hearts with wisdom's gentle call. They sow compassion, standing strong and tall. In every act and every joy of faith along the way, for wisdom's path, their hearts do ardently seek, bringing healing touch and blessings to the meek. In realms divine, their light does brightly shine, like stars that in firmament align. The righteous bear eternal fruit so sweet, in gardens where love and truth meet. Their legacy, woven with divine design, captures souls with love's embrace entwined. So let us stand as trees, steadfast and true, spreading hope beneath the skies so blue, for in capturing souls with love's embrace, we find wisdom in God's heavenly grace. Each soul they touch, a precious jewel they find, guiding the lost, healing hearts and minds. In deeds of kindness, their hearts are known. For love's true throne, their light is shown. In fields where virtue's seeds are sown with care, a tree of life grows strong and fair. Its branches reach out, its leaves aglow. A sanctuary where true wisdom flows. Let a soul with love's embrace profound. In fields of hope and grace that abound. For when earthly journey is through, the souls we've touched will shine anew. With tender care and compassion's gentle art, they bear the fruit that heals every heart, a bounty of kindness and righteousness, to nourish souls and grant them God's blessedness. Wisdom guides their steps along the righteous way, capturing souls from darkness to God's eternal day. For those who embrace truth, their words impart, bringing solace and healing to every wounded heart. Seeds of wisdom planted, souls to feed in every kindness and every deed. Fruit of righteousness and bloom so bright, dispelling gloom with love's pure light. So let us be as trees, rooted deep in God's might, bearing kindness's fruit in day and darkest night, influencing lives with wisdom's guiding hand.
person. Here are our announcements. Come join us every Sunday for our worship and healing services. Our first service is at 8 a.m. and our second service is at 10.30 a.m. Don't forget to join us on Facebook to see our Facebook Live. Sunday School is available at every service for ages 1 to 12. Don't forget to join us every Friday at 7.30 p.m. for our Night of Power. Every first Saturday of the month at 5 a.m. we have our Dawn Watch. Every last Wednesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. join us for Win Enhancement. Come join us for our CYN service every other Saturday at 4 p.m. Interested in joining a life group? Contact your local pastor. Our first service pastor is Pastor Tony Laracas and our second service pastor is Pastor Tara Agbon. Looking for a JIL church close to you? We also have our JIL Auto OS, pastored by Pastor Judith Abelianosa. Our worship and healing service on Sunday is at 1.30 p.m. And our night of power on Friday is at 7.30 p.m. This is located at 930 Watson Street, Ottawa, Ontario. Another JIL church close by is JIL Gadano, pastored by Pastor Adele Katoy Hughes. Our worship and healing service is on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. and the Night of Power is on Friday at 7.30 p.m. located at 9 Rue Amherst, Unit 101, Gatineau, Quebec. Don't forget to enroll your kids for our Vacation Bible School from ages 1 to 12 this July 22 to 26 at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 2026 Lantier Drive, Orleans, Ontario. Please contact Sister Benny to register your kids and we are open for volunteers. To stay updated for all of our events, don't forget to follow us on our social media, Facebook, JIL Church Ottawa, or Instagram, at JIL Ottawa.
to clap a big clap for our dear God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Can we invite everyone to please arise as we open this in the right way? We will close it in the right way. For Psalm 145, 1 says, Great is whom worthy to be praised. The greatness who we cannot fathom. Amen. Come on. Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
And thank you so much, oh God, for our beloved Pastor Bong Gonzalez, who here preached thy holy words. Our prayer that you will continually anoint him, that you will continually use him mightily in your vineyard, together with his family, that wherever his footsteps goes, oh God, you will continually bring healing to that land, to that place, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we also thank you for our beloved brother Eddie Villanueva. Truly, it's our privilege to be under his anointing and umbrella to saturate the whole entire world that you have given the mandate and that you have given the calling for the lost souls, oh God. Thank you that many lives transforms, many lives have healed, oh God. Thank you so much for what you are going to the JL worldwide in the name of Jesus. And today, Father, we are thank you also for all our visitors, for all the new souls that have been added to your kingdom for the glory of your name. Father, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for what you are going to do and have done into our lives for 29 years. We are all standing in your presence. Thanking you indeed for your unending love and your people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We give you glory for what you have done into the JL Ottawa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. And thank you, believing, knowing something new, something miraculous is going to happen in the name of Jesus. And this very moment, can we please all stretch forth our hands to this very mouth of the of Ottawa, the land of Canada. Our prayer, and please release prayer, that all the entire cities of this jail, Ottawa, Canada, will be saturated with churches, will be planted of churches in the name of Jesus. A prophetic gesture that today is the day of celebration. You have ignited. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for igniting our hearts for the souls. Thank you so much, Father God. Our prayer that each and every city, each and every angel, oh God, of this map, oh Lord, that wherever your people are going to go, it will be saturated for your name and your name alone, Father. In the name of Jesus, the four corners, oh God, will be planted with churches, oh Lord. In Jesus' name. And you are going to use men and women who have the passion for the lost souls. In the name of Jesus. Because end time is coming. In Jesus' name. You will raise up men and women. Lord, to go through to all these cities. In Jesus' name. And before our 30th, Lord, many more churches will be added for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that all of us have faith, oh God, that this Canada is for you and for you alone. Jesus over Ottawa. Jesus is Lord over Canada. Jesus is Lord over all the provinces of Canada. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Ottawa, arise and shine, for your light has come. You will not be only known as the power of Canada in political, economic, but also the power of the Holy Spirit shall rise upon you. We declare salvation, healings, revival, not only for Jail Church, but even for other Christ-centered churches. Holy Spirit, bring revival to all Christ-centered churches. Ottawa, arise, shine. Let you be the center of worship. 
Yes, in Canada and through you, bring back Canadian to the feet of Jesus. Through you, bring back Canada as it declares in its national anthem, God keep our land. So be it, Ottawa. Revival, revival, revival be upon you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Can you please also stretch towards our hands towards this prayer box? Father God, we are believing and standing in this ground. This ground is a holy ground. That whatever we put, petitions, requests in this prayer box, you already answered, Father. So thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, especially, oh God, for all the paperwork from the immigrations, oh Lord. Those who are waiting, oh Lord. We believe, we receive whatever we ask for in prayer. This we pray in Jesus' name. All the children of God say, Amen. Amen.